evening. Welcome to another edition of Face to Face. Joining us this evening is uh, Lehini Fernando from the Samaki Janapala Vegia. Uh, a very good evening, Lehini, and welcome good to the evening. show. Thank you for having me. Um, Lehini, we're in the run-up to an election. Uh, first question is, I'm, I'm posing this question to quite a few uh, political actors who come here on, on, on the show because uh, to you know, pick your brain and, and give some clarity to the general public. Uh, there is this big discussion going on, whether it's a presidential election or a general election. What do you think? So uh, constitutionally, if you look at it, the presidential election has to happen first. Hmm. But however, the president has the prerogative to declare. Hmm. So uh, it depends how he, he's already in office. So he's hmm. obviously going to bring in the election that that is favorable for him hmm. that will ensure I mean at, at the end of the day the lead of the country must look in the best interest of the country but hmm. however when he comes to power everybody's interested in securing their position hmm. so hmm. Uh, he he will probably want to seek a tenure for him hmm. so he will want everybody's support so hmm. he's more inclined to go uh, with a presidential election though you know rumors and everything says declare general but hmm. constitutionally it is a presidential election hmm. so if it's a presidential election um, now it's certain that from the Samagi Janabal it's your leader, Sajid Premadasa, the opposition leader who will be contesting. Uh, there is a little bit of ambiguity on the part of whether the SLPP will support Ranil Vikramasinghe as their candidate or field an entirely different candidate of their own. Uh, the UNP is quite adamant and, and, and st uh, stern on the fact that Ranil Vikramasinghe is contesting the presidency. Uh, you get uh, Andhra Kumar Desanayake from the JJB coming into the fore. Uh, then there are all these new parties that have popped up, where do you see, uh, who do you see as your biggest competition at an upcoming presidential election? I want to say we have no competition. No competition? I want to say we have no competition because we are the opposition, we are the answer to the issue. Hmm. I'm not being very, uh, I'm being, op not being optimistic and also because Sajid Premadas uh, throughout his tenure here as an opposition leader and on the issues that he speaks in parliament, clearly he is the alternative. Maybe people in this country, when we start campaigning, people mm. in this country must start listening to what the SJB is saying. Mm. Because sadly, our people in this country now think that this is a protest vote, that you know all the major two parties have failed and mm. let's give a, give a third party a, another chance. But you know, throughout the uh, years in this country, people have gambled with their vote mm. versus voting on policy versus mm. voting on, on a scientific basis. Mm. You need to vote on policy, you need to listen to what the leaders talk and what mm. they offer to the table. Mm. You need to evaluate their teams who will be able to deliver. Mm. Now when Gota Bear Rajapaksa ran, I remember me on campaign stages and all of us repeatedly saying, look this person has never held office either at a Pradesh Sabha or at a provincial council mm. or even in parliament. How, what is the knowledge that he has in terms of governance? which clearly proved that when he came in, he did not know how to, uh, how to run the system. He didn't even know the system because he was not a product of the system. Hmm. Then he had this whole team of Vyatmaga that was backing him and throughout the period, where are the people in the Vyatmaga? But now, he did have experienced politicians backing him, like former President but, Mahindra Rajapaksa, even former President Maitri Palasin. But then at, at the, the end of the day, he, he, was, he was brought in with different hope, no, so hmm. he will change the system. But then it didn't happen, clearly because as a leader, he did not have the experience. Hmm. Anyone can back you, but then as a leader, you, must be, you should be able to hold forth. Hmm. Hmm. Then you look at the other party, the 3%, who is, who is you know, campaigning today saying that they are the solution hmm. but who are who are who, who are they left with who hmm. is their team people and what is the policies that they are going to talk about now we know that they are left wing communist hmm. policies hmm. and who in what way should sri lanka be led market economic policies hmm. we must compete with the world but here we are going back we will go backwards hmm. if we align with them now with gota bear rajapaksa coming in he completely turned the market economy policies to a, co a homegrown policy a protectionist policy whereas hmm. on jjb uh, they will go uh, take the country further backwards. So people in this country must understand who do they want. Now, SJB, on the other hand, are talking about social market economy, hmm. uh, arriving at social justice, economic justice, where hmm. we bring you economic justice, take the country forward, as well as ensuring that so as a society, we are protected. So hmm. Sajid Premadasa clearly advocates on these two lines, whereas Sajid Premadasa as a leader is an empathetic leader, understands people's problems, hmm. women, children. I mean, you see the issues that he talks in parliament. No leader in parliament talks the facts that the issues that he talks. Hmm. And then you take the market, the economy, you have the likes of Iran, the Harshas, the Kabirs, who, who as we have put out our blueprint, our economic policy, the manner in which we will lead the country is very clear. 
Hmm. So people of this country, are, is it a protest vote? Is it like you know you want to discard everybody, but you or do you want to understand what we are talking and listen to what we are saying that we will do? Hmm. So I think repeatedly there's a saying that people in this country get who they deserve, hmm. but we have not got who what we deserve because we have also not voted wisely. Hmm. We have gone behind political rhetorics. When GR came, okay, it's the last time to save the country. When Mahinda Rajapaksa came, oh my God, he saved the country. Let's let's give him a vote for gratitude. Hmm. Yes, now you can go and vote the three percent clan and say we are we hate the every we hate everybody and let's let's side by that. But people of this country must understand if they do that, what are the repercussions? Who is the team that is there to lead the country? Do they have the knowledge? Ra ma managing the government service, managing hmm. the state administration is a science of itself. You have got to have experience and people who knows how to maneuver. Because hmm. our systems have crippled, and look at what they are what they're saying. Recently, I heard on a TV discussion, Mr. Sunil Handunethi saying, "Whatever said and done, our our policies, our principles, our core principles remain intact." Hmm. Which means they are talking about their communist leftist policies. So, is that what the people of this country want? I want to ask this. So, whereas Sajid Premadasa and the SJB is the safest option and also the solution because hmm. we really know what we are talking about. But I think you know people in this country, uh, you know, for time to time they go behind rhetorics, they go behind stories, they hmm. go behind empathetic stories. They want, they aspire their leader to be this whole macho man with you know uh, physical. You know, you you know what uh, hmm. people in this country have voted for. So I think you know. Uh, people must understand to vote on policy. They must look at policy. They must talk on manifest manifestos. They must read manifestos. I think you know even the media and all these institutions. We got to talk on where we are going to take the country forward and who is the team. And we must guide the people to vote scientifically. Uh, but then, Lichini, now you spoke about a number of considerations. You first said that whoever is coming into power, whoever is to lead our country, needs to have the experience, the maneuverability on 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 you know, gelling well with this mechanism of state administration. Then you also spoke about uh, the policy documents and the policies of uh, the parties, of the candidates that are contesting for the presidential election. So let's start with the policies. Now, we saw even in 2019, Gotabe Rajapaksa put out a, put out a policy document, Vistas of Prosperity mm, yeah. and Splendor, that had... Um, it was it was discussed. Uh, there were digital versions of it. Uh, I, I remember mm, there were yeah. holographic versions of uh, you know this this entire policy document. Uh, it was very techy. When we went through the policy document, there weren't too many uh, proposals, of course, that are adverse to the country. Of course, some of those policies were kind of broad, not very specific. So uh, no. there was a bit of ambiguity and and, and room for them to maneuver, but. The problem is, Lahini, the room that the policy, the, the, the actions, once they came into power, were mm. completely Different. contrary right, to, the to the policies that they put in place. They said, you know, they said, we will bring justice to the Easter Sunday attacks. But no, <laughs> five years down the line, and we still have former presidents coming and saying that they know more than what the CID knows. Then they said, they will bring justice to the bond scam. But now, well, they are backing the person who supposedly, according to them, was the mastermind and the perpetrator behind this. So, it's not really the policy that you put forward now, is it, Lahini? It's whether or not you will stick to that document or whether you would completely just bulldoze it. See, the, the issue here, Sharon, is a very good point. We have no mechanism in this country hold, to hold uh, politicians accountable to their policy documents. I think that is a discussion that we need to have hmm. on all these manifestos that you put out how you how you deliver on it and are you accountable to whatever you are stating on paper because mm. that is a very good example uh, gota berajapaksa came in and then he went to a complete homegrown policy with his whole fertilizer issue mm. and you know completely and, and even the tax policies the 2019 uh, the reversal of taxes that was never mentioned, that was never mentioned. in so, the document yeah so if, if talking from uh, your point of view is is relying on a policy alone is mm. uh, safer but then your policies are half of it your policies are what uh, defines you. So your hmm. policies also must be intact. Your policies can't be completely adverse. Hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. No, but my, my, my point is it really doesn't matter what you put in that policy document because once the election is done, no, th that's that is a, that, toilet paper. Th that is a wrong notion because we, at the end of the day, we don't hold politicians accountable to what they say. 
that exactly. is that exactly. is the problem because there is no such mechanism in this country and so these are points of discussion that needs to happen but, but, but an Hine, now, let's, let's take let's take foreign countries for example let's take a few countries that we aspire to be uh, there are no laws that hold politicians accountable to what they write they are just very truthful people yeah. they are honest people they will uh, exactly. You know, they will tell the people what they are going to do and they will do what they said they were going to do. See, the, the thing is, uh, Shalan, then in Sri Lanka, the name of the game has been just corruption. How do you earn off the state system? How do you survive? That, that is, has been the name of the game. When you come to office, you know, you want to make the best out of it. Make the, make the best out of the make state. Make the most, most amount of money. Money. So earn that, for as many exactly. generations as you can. Politicians don't come there saying, you know, let me do, the, do right by the people. Let me do tax, uh, right by the taxpayers. No. So this whole system that you and I are talking mm. is a, has has failed, has failed. The system mm. has failed. The politicians have failed. So we need to start somewhere. So either either at the next election, your policy documents you produce, you have to you have to find, figure out, and we have to figure out a mechanism on how to hold our uh, politicians accountable to the policy document. It can't be something completely contrary to that. No, mm. if you are voting one party that believes in liberal policies, they have to govern in liberal policies. If if not, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. I, do you want a homegrown a homegrown related policy or a liberal policy or a protectionist or a protectionist policy or do you want a communist policy? Mm. That's what I meant when you say you, you need to consider what policy. But then this policy document must be binding in some way. If not, at the end of the day, uh, it's going to be a huge issue and it has been an issue. Hmm. So uh, what uh, what people of this but country... Lina, how, practically, how do you do it? Because from the looks of it, at least from the looks of it, uh, now we don't know, we're very sceptical hmm. about how things might pan out after an election because people feel most powerful during the run-up to an election. Actually. They're treated like gods and yeah. goddesses uh, because of that valuable vote. But w once the election is done, you're just discarded and, and treated like dirt, uh, to, be, yeah, to be very frank. So, so how, how do you change this? See, what do you do? See, the thing is, at the end of the day, uh, politicians also must, be, must realize the powerful person is a citizen. The sovereignty is vested with the citizen. Mm. And it is no longer a system where the, poly, uh, the citizen was weak because we saw the Aragale, how powerful the citizen was. Mm. The citizen stood up. So, you know, politicians who get, uh, get, get elected also must understand that they, they have to be accountable to the citizen. Mm. If not, they will get thrown out mm. and people will not hesitate to uh, come to the roads again. Mm. So, you know, uh, that is the citizenary power in this country must it must increase and the citizen must rise. Mm. It is only by citizen activation, it is only by you demanding your local politician who comes to you, comes to ask for the vote. Mm. It is only by demanding and it is only by ho holding them accountable that we can change the system. Mm. If you are going to vote for your rice bags and, you know, uh, for your personal benefit or if you are a crony voting so that, you know, your businesses and assets mm. can be attacked, mm then you can't expect change. So, that I, I would say this particular election, mm. the, the run-up to the election, these are conversations that we need to have and these are conversations that uh, political parties also must take into consideration that your policy document is not just a mere document but mm. that it is a binding document to which you are accountable to the people. So, it can be a thing where you give a pledge. You mm. can ask all political parties to give a pledge, come in front of the people, sign a document, mm. to make it public, you know, that we will hold and then so that people can go back and view it. Uh, you can say, you know, put your policy documents, create websites, put your policy documents mm. so that people can view it. Mm. And then, you know, those things have to, mm. you, you can go back and question. Mm. Ask them what your hundred first day, hundred day action plan is when you come, come to office, how will you run mm. these state institutions, privatization, what is your policy? Mm. Uh, state in institutions, loss making institutions, what is your policy? Mm. Uh, twin deficits, what is your policy? IMF, what is your policy? So, people must ask these questions. Ideally, maybe, you know, there are independent organizations mm. that are working, maybe they need to put a series of questions to everybody and say all political parties answer this, depending, and then you give scorings. Mm. So, I think, you know, there needs to be mechanisms developed to hold uh, these parties accountable across board, I would say. Okay, uh, Lihini, that's, that's your take on, po on, on policies. Uh, then let's move to this leader or, or the qualities of a leader that you so spoke of. Uh, now, you say that uh, Sajid Premadasa has uh, his experience in politics. Uh, of course, he's been in politics for an extended period of time. Uh, then you said that uh, the underdog at the election who is now coming up, uh, the JJB, said they've not been in politics. But is that really true? They've been in politics for quite some time, haven't they? But then what have they delivered? 
what has has they even brought a single private members bill there are so many issues in this country that can be championed irrespective of political party differences what have they championed what have they spoken in mm. parliament right throughout a pack they come they say they have these uh, files they did a show at one point mm. at some place you know presented all these mm. files mm. why have they filed a single uh, complaint at the cid i mean have they done have they taken action what mm. have they done do you need to come to power itself to take action no there's things like public interest litigation, there's FR cases, what have they done? So, mm. you know, people, you know, what you talk and what you do are completely different things. So, if, uh, uh, I mean, even right now, the country is in the in economic crisis, you still can do things to look after the interests of the people. I'm not saying going and distributing rice bags, that's not what I'm saying. Mm. But, you know, doing certain things to ensure that people, people are, uh, people are, well, like mm. contributing to the state machinery, like, for example, now Sajid Premadasa is giving equipment to uh, schools, mm. smart boards to schools. People view it in different, different angles, but mm. that is his passion. And he thinks, you know, that he can contribute towards the education of the children. What, what are the questions that's posed on these programs, of course, is, is where does he get the money? Where does the SJB get the money for all of these so programs? So there, 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 are, there are people who have pledged. There are people who have pledged and it's a direct, uh, direct uh, uh, supplier to the... And that's what we also know. Hmm. So, but it's not that the party gets funds and all that. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, he has, he is using his power, he's using his knowledge, he's using his charisma hmm. to make sure that using his position that he delivers the best for the people. Hmm. So, he, I mean, I mean, that if he can do it, why can't the others do it? Hmm. So, you so, know, that's so, what I'm saying. Politicians, you don't need to actually be in government alone to serve the people. Hmm. Yes, that conventional opposition is there to oppose for everything, but mm. you can constructively oppose and constructively work together. Mm. So that's a route Sajid Premadasa has chosen that he wants to make sure that he's using his office and his position. Now, recently he negotiated with the ADB and mm. got a loan of 100 million uh, based on his request for small and medium enterprises, entrepreneurship, uh, a loan for Sri Lanka. So this he's using his connections to, you know, do just as the people of this country. But so, we'll, we'll, as a country, we'll have to pay back that loan. Yeah, so we have, anyway, we have to pay so many <laughs> loans. So, I mean, but then at this at this point, no one is giving us any loans for hmm. uh, for upliftment of the country. So, you know, uh, people in this country also must evaluate and see uh, when it comes to leaders, people who talk and people who deliver and people who have the capability to deliver hmm. and people who say that they have the capability to deliver, do they actually have the capability to deliver? Hmm. Uh, Lihini, now, since your cup of tea is, of course, law and order, uh, given your position in your, in your professional life, um, what's the SJB's real plan? Because we see, we've seen countless governments now come and go on the promise of, you know, anti-corruption, taking action against the corrupt, even though the corruption is blatant. It's before our eyes. Following the 2015 presidential election, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa uh, came out and he said, you know, we had files, we hid files, we protected people. Now, having all of that said, nothing has happened. One of the only politicians who I saw uh, was really brought to book was uh, former minister Duminda de Sanayaka. Uh, sorry, uh, Duminda De Silva, Silva. Duminda De Silva, uh, who was brought to book that over a murder charge, uh, and and that too was uh, there was a pardon given, the pardon was reversed, and all of that. But besides that, uh, when it came to true corruption, that was not corruption, that was point blank murder. Mm. Uh, but when it came to like true corruption, nothing has happened. Yeah. So, so what is the SJB plan yeah, on doing? Because people are demanding yeah. for a lot now. I I they know don't. in the run up to an election, it's easy to make big promises, but the people will expect as much yeah. from you, yeah. and if you don't deliver. Right after five years, yeah, you'll be kicked out. I, I personally, I'm also against all these politicians who winking with the emotions of people when it comes to coming and saying, "Look, we will give you justice, and we will uh, bring justice to the Easter victims. We will bring justice to the Wasinta Judins and all mm -hmm. of that." And you know, just coming and giving election promises and all. You know that. how the I'm, system works. I know in the how the system sector. works, <laughs> and I, I personally, I want to say, even if it's my party. Uh, if they are not doing it, mm. we will also be people who will come out and call out the party saying, look, you promised this, you have to deliver. Because mm. I think it is enough that people of this country, the politicians, played with the emotions of the people. A country, this country is not going forward, Shalan, because we don't have uh, proper law and order. You, mm. can't, you can't treat politicians one way and you can't see the citizen the other way. Mm. Law and order should be equal to all. Even, mm. if you are a, even if you are the president of the country or the prime minister of the country, if you have violated the law, you, you are accountable, you, you have to be punished. Mm. 
that is the thinking that must be driven just mm. because you are who's who and who's who you you can't come behind the back door and mm. the leader also must, should not waver off and if mm. that has happened in the history of this country i'm sorry it shouldn't happen mm. if, if my party also in future does it we as young politicians i i personally will say i will come and call out for because mm. that is not the politics that i personally advocate and that is not the reason why i'm also in politics mm. because it is enough this country needs to change law and order must take precedence and also these institutions the police the judiciary mm. these institutions must be independent you have mm. to give them the power and the autonomy to act mm. and the law must take its course the state administration must take its course the leaders must put that in place mm. so for that to happen just by talking won't do you have to earn the trust of the people mm. what our politicians have failed to understand is they are all talking but they're not delivering you need to deliver deliver comes with action mm. for example we are in economy it would have been nice we are in economic crisis and the people of this country are suffering if the politicians also you know t- took us took a uh took a dip on their securities and you mm. know all of that if they also took me took a took a certain stance to bring out bring down their costs that would have given people of this country some assurance okay they feel a pain mm. instead of you know going and increasing their salaries and talking of that conversation And putting additional the, insurance yeah exactly policies. they shouldn't un- they, in this country they have held themselves as the as the privilege mm. no they are not the privilege they are there to serve the but, country but with all due respect lehini now there are certain members of the sjb also in parliament you're not a parliamentarian yeah. so i won't hold you to that but they too receive these yeah. benefits and so they and too can do it if they want to do it but so, they are not doing it so that i i'm i can't i you can't, can't talk, i can't speak on behalf of you <laughs> but i'm just saying in general uh, you know the, this if if politicians act with a consciousness hmm. uh, yes i can defend everybody but you know it's not it's not about defending everything if it's hmm. wrong hmm. you do have to call a call call Definitely. them out as wrong because we have not uh, we have not had people calling uh, calling out you know if it's you know it would have been good if if somebody led with example you if you if it's good if you can put your asset make your asset declarations public but now it's it's it's, it's mandatory it's is it mandatory, not it's mandatory but you know nothing has come out as yet so a few, few i think about seven people have already declared uh, and it is it is available hmm. but i think you know i think we need to lead by example you know some people say uh, we are not taking pensions but they hmm. are also taking the pension <laughs> people who i mean they they don't they say they don't want uh, i don't want to name, mention names but they say they don't want the madivel housing but they they have their stu just living in those houses hmm. you know who i'm talking about hmm. so yeah so it's like you know you come and say oh my god we are not taking the salary but they're taking take the salary and put it to their uh, what do you call that party account and from the party account they take a salary so hmm. what who are you who would winky this is what i'm saying in this country you know people of this country also must must understand who can actually deliver who actually talks who will actually come and work mm. uh, lehini now on on these matters that you spoke of of course um, when you speak about the broader policy yeah. uh, you can't give very specific details as to we will do this we will do this because there could be a change in circumstances some of the negotiations might not work out and we're in a very uh, Uh, you know volatile mm. environment as it is with the economic crisis uh, so these little points that you mentioned on 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 having certain limits in 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 uh, perks and privileges given to politicians on having certain limits in in pensions given to politicians now we know several politicians who are in parliament right now who are drawing their salaries as a former president who are drawing their salaries as a parliamentarian Uh, enjoying their privileges as a former president and also enjoying their privileges as a parliamentarian mm. that's the state of affairs so um would these matters also be looked into in the policy document that you're putting into where you would list out certain cutbacks on yeah. these massive expenses on maintaining the executive yeah so the re- if you really look at it if you take uh, most of the income in this country it's, it's all for recurrent expenditure the salaries the perks the vehicles all that the state entire state administration to funnel the administration including politicians and everything mm. so if if one is really interested in taking the country forward one must take a clean slate <coughs> excuse me the clean slate mm. on all this and see how we can how how we can fix so if you have 1.5 million state uh, state officials hmm. how do you you know re, uh, realign them because hmm. we see development officers in in one institutions and recently we saw the president saying he's going to employ 1000 <coughs> grama niradaris but you know you can deploy the ones that are already there hmm. so one must take a clean slate uh on this whole government administration system and how how one is going to fix it so that will involve cutting down costs recurrent expenditure mm. uh, and even the loans that they have taken from state banks mm. 
how do you pay back the loans? So, hmm. all these things. So, I think you know policy documents should not just be lines. One exactly. must ask the hard questions and ask you know how you are going to cut down the state hmm. infrastructure, how do you make certain certain institutions profitable, privatization, you know it is not about a taboo in privatization. There are certain things like pri public private partnerships that hmm. one can go to. So, these hard questions we must ask the politicians, put out your strategy. Hmm. Put out a strategy when it comes to state sector. How do you, how are you going to mitigate the inefficiencies? Hmm. We are running at a twin deficit, balance of payment deficits, export import deficit. Uh -huh. How are you going to may bring this to a surplus? Yes, you can't bring it to a surplus uh, within a couple of years. But what is your plan? Hmm. The overall snowballing debt. What is your plan? What are your <coughs> what are the new sources of income that you are going to bring to the country? And what is your project projected revenue? Hmm. We are just what how many billion economy? What is the projected uh, economy? Uh, economy. Growth. Economic growth in this country, and how will you drive? You know, these are the needs, not just a policy document of you know fancy lines saying we will do this, we will do that. Mm -hmm. So, I, as I always say, we have not asked the hard questions from politicians, political parties. Again, then it leads to meritocracy. We mm. don't do we have the right people sitting in the right place? Do we have the right people running for office? Mm. See all these things. But, but I think I think that's 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 a broader problem in in, yeah. in political parties. You don't see meritocracy. Merit and I keep bringing this up, uh, but uh, the Tamil parties in the north they had <coughs> about three to four hundred people vote yeah. and elect their leader. We don't see that happening in any of the other major political yeah. or so-called major yeah, political, political parties. parties in Sri Lanka. So there. Uh, th so what's hold up, Lena? This is what I would <laughs> say. Is this we, you must segregate the government administration from the. A politician, the control a politician has in the government so, administration. But I think that was done. The Public uh, Services Commission was for broken namesake. away for namesake. And but then now it has it has been brought back into the but under the umbrella of the but cabinet. Then, but when when a minister sits on a chair and gives and and and, and, and Lahini now now when we speak about we're in the final few minutes of the yeah. program, so I just try to get this through real quick. When we speak about you know having certain transparency, you now the IMF has called for transparency and not to nitpick and and and, and give preference to certain organizations. We saw a few days ago the management of the entire expressway system in Sri Lanka mm. was given to one company by how? A cabinet decision. Issues, yes. No, no tenders called, yes, no transparency. Issues. So that's what, when things like that happen, you need to have bodies questioning. You need to have independent bodies questioning. You need to have people, you know, asking the hard questions. We but Lini, when we when we invite them on these shows, they don't quite make it. So that that's <laughs> that's the thing. I think you know, overall in this country, uh, as I said, the state institutions, the way they manage, the way mm. they operate, you know, they they must hold. Uh, they are accountable at the end of the day to the taxpayer. If they if they ask the right questions from the politicians, our situation would be far more different. Hmm. Like you take countries like the West, the US, uh, the system runs. Hmm. The politician is just there to, you know, uh, they are not there to administer. They are just a figurehead. But hmm. then the system takes over. The problem in this country is there is no system. The system keeps changing. Why is the system changing? Because there is no policy. I think, you know, what would be ideal for this country is if there can be some level of consensus to map out the policies for this country, hmm. we will we will have a better win. Thank you very much, uh, Lehini Fernando from the Samagi Chanabala Vege for joining us this <coughs> evening and then answering, of course, the hard questions. And we will continue to post uh, the hard questions for those of uh, who would dare to come on the program, <laughs> who would accept our invite, of course, and come here to speak to the general public um, and make known their policies in this run-up to uh, the presidential election. This is no ordinary year. It's a year where we will be given an opportunity to rewrite the future of Sri Lanka. We have been given many opportunities in the past and we have made many mistakes. It's now time uh, to make an informed decision for the benefit of not only us but the future generations of Sri Lanka as well. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Face to Face. Until we meet again, take care. And God bless.